Hi there, this is Ryan Malloy here at the Worldwide Center of Mathematics. In this video, we're going to discuss how to calculate the probability of consecutive events. Here we have a bucket with 10 balls in it. Four of them are white, three are red, two are blue, and one is brownish yellow. So, what we want to be able to do is to calculate the probability of consecutive drawings of balls where we're assuming for this problem that each ball is equally likely to be picked, which may not always be true in the real world, but we'll assume it's true for this example. So let's talk about one example. Let's say, what is the probability of getting three white balls in a row? Before we answer that question, there is one point we need to consider. Are we drawing the balls with replacement or without? In other words, after we reach into our bucket and pick out a ball, do we set it aside or do we place it back in again? We'll do one example of each to show you how the probabilities will change. So the sequence we want is white, white, white. And we're going to say for this one that there is replacement. In other words, after we draw out a ball, we make a note of what color we've picked, and we place it back in our bucket. So what we want to do is calculate the, the probability of each event and then multiply them together. So we'll start with the first white ball. So we have 10 balls total. So that'll be the denominator of our fraction. And there are four possible events that we would want, since there are four white balls. OK. But since we're replacing the balls each time, this probability will be true for all of these events. There's a 4 in 10 chance of getting white the first time, 4 in 10 chance of getting white the second time, and 4 in 10 chance of getting white the third time. So to find the total probability, we just multiply them all together. And that's that. So we get 4 times 4 is 16, times 4 is 64, and 10 times 10 is 100, times 10 is 1,000. So essentially, there is a 64 in 1,000 chance that drawing three times with the replacement will give you three white balls. OK. Let's do an example without replacement. In other words, we take out a ball, make note of its color, and then set it aside, as opposed to putting it back in the bucket. Let's say that what we're looking for is two balls in a row that are not red. OK? So let's calculate the probability of the first event. Again, there are 10 different balls in the bucket. So that's the denominator of our fraction. And the first time we draw, there are 10 minus 3 balls that we can get. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 balls out of 10 that satisfy the criteria of not being red. OK. But then the second time will be a little bit different. We're assuming here that we've already pulled out a ball that is not red. So we can go ahead and eliminate one of them. That means that there are still three red balls in our bucket, but there are only 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 non-red balls for a total of 9. So there's one less event that's possible. And there are six with the desirable outcome. Then we simply multiply these together, as we did before. So 7 times 6 is 42. 9 times 10 is 90. And we get that there is a 42 over 90 chance of getting two non-red balls without replacement. And in both of these cases, you can simplify the fractions if it, the problem specifies to do so, but these are both accurate statements. It's not strictly necessary to reduce the fraction. And that's essentially all there is to it. My name is Ryan Malloy, and we've just discussed how to calculate the probability of consecutive events. Mm -hmm.